you folks. In this film today I'm going to be making a hopped cider. I'm going to call this recipe day one. It's more of a preparation day really because today I'm going to be preparing my apples and picking some of the hops which is going to take quite a while in itself. I'll show you the hop bush shortly. These are my apples. They're all windfall. They've come from two different trees. I've got sweet red apples from around the front of my house and then I've got some more tart cooking apples at the back of my house. I've been away for a week and in that week there's probably about four or five kilos fallen off the tree. In fact I'm going to weigh them now and we'll find out how many are there. So as it turns out I've got two and a half kilos of sweet red apples and I've got four kilos of the more bitter cooking apples. Together I've got six and a half kilos of apples and I'm going to combine these with some brewing sugar, some hops, some pectolase, some yeast and some yeast nutrient to make my cider. So it's a massively repetitive process what I've got to do to begin with and it's simply to half each apple like so, put them in the pan and carry on. Okay, this is going to take a while. I'll be back when they're all in the pan. Right, that's six and a half kilos of apples in my big saucepan. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of water onto these. I want to add maybe the equivalent of three centimetres of water in the bottom of the pan. I'm just having to do it by guesswork. Okay, so I've got the pan on the ring, lid goes on, gas goes on low. And I'm going to leave these now to steam and simmer. This might take an hour or so. I'll be back then. So here's my hop vine. It's a cascade hop. And it goes all the way along here, and there, and round here. And there, and all the way to there. I guess you could call it Hopzilla, it's a monster. So typically I'm just about to start to begin and it started raining. So the easiest way to do this is to cut the vine and then unravel the hops. Then simply pick the flowers off, put the flowers in one tub. When I've got all the flowers off, the vine that's left in the leaves go in a waste tub, which becomes compost at the side. It's a long job. I'll be back in a little while. See you soon. So far, cheers folks. Right, I've cleared about six feet of vine. That's what I've got so far. But unfortunately, as you can hear, the rain has beaten me. Anyway, quick apple update from the kitchen. By the way, they're going in the fridge. But the apples, let's have a look, they're sweating nicely. They're still too firm. Smells fantastic though, you can really get the apple smell from it. So the ones underneath seem a little bit mushy. So what I need to do is to try and rotate them a little bit. What I could do with is a really wide pan that fit over all four rings. Do they exist? If so, please somebody in the comments tell me what they're called and where I can get one from. My wife will love that. Okay, you can see how the juice is coming out of the apples as well. That water level has really risen massively more than what it was. Okay, there's not an awful lot more I can do here. It's just time and patience. Back in a bit. Okay, 45 minutes later, let's have a look. Oh, steamy. So lovely stuff, lovely jubbly. 
just as I'm wanting it. Right. Some of them are still a little bit hard, the ones on top, so I'm pushing them down. But notice how the level of apples in the pan has fallen. They were right to the top before. Five more minutes, then they're off. Okay, five minutes are up. Heat off. Done for today. So it's a lovely coincidence, but I've just gone into the drinks fridge to pull a cider out. I've got lots of different random ones in there. And what I've pulled out is one of last year's hot ciders, which I bottled in January. So I think I started making this quite late and I probably left this in secondary for a long time, uh, longer than I will be doing this year because I need to move things around. Um, but so this is from January 2022. So I'm just interested to see how this has matured now. So considering I'm in September, We've got a Titan, right. So still a pop. Oh yeah, this bit kept its carbonation. Smells good. So we just see how this looks in the glass. Oh, it looks fabulous. Look at that. That's really kept its carbonation. It's a big heed. Smells amazing. It's got that hoppiness, almost like elderflower champagne smell. Okay, so the head's dissipated a little bit. This is an 8.4% cider from last year. Let's just see how this is working out now. Well, I'm going to say from last year, bottled in January, but made last year. Do you know what? That's actually really interesting because I remember this being so dry and hoppy and elderflower-like that that was all I could taste. But I actually tasted apples then. Yeah, that's really balanced. Do you know what? If you've got a bit of patience and you're happy to leave your brews, they will improve. That is actually really nice. It definitely tastes like a cider, which has got that sort of hoppiness to it, rather than a hot punch in the mouth, which is what it tasted like when I had it last year, or earlier this year, I should say. It's a good one. Morning folks, it's preparation day two. Let's have a look at those apples. So here they are, nice and mushed and ready now to be pushed through the sieve into the other pan. This is gonna take a while and I won't film the whole process because it's boring, but I'll just show you a little bit at the beginning. So I simply get my apples, put them into the sieve. You can see it's already starting to drip through. Get three spoonfuls in there. And then simply with a wooden spoon, push the mixture and pull the apples through the sieve. So that's the first sieve done. So that's what's left. That's rubbish that's going to go for compost for the garden. And that is the puree which has come out, which is eventually going to go into the cider. So I've got a lot more of this to do. I'll come back to you when it's all done. Well, I've done. And I'll tell you what, my arm's blooming aching. Right. That is a lot of apple puree. That's some mush to go on the garden and that's the empty big pan. I'm probably going to transfer this back into this big pan when I give it a, a rinse out and I'll get back to the recipe this evening because I've got to go to work now. I guess I have a job as well. Um, so I'll be picking the hops this evening hopefully, um, the remainder of the hops that I'm going to need and starting to put this together again. I might not even finish the recipe today, it might be tomorrow. Anyway, catch you later. Hey folks, hoppy cider update. Oh, this is preparation day three. This has taken some time. I've been busy, busy, busy. As you can see, the kitchen is looking pretty busy. I've got bottling to do over there. I've got lots of hops picked. I've got this there. In terms of hop progress, I've cut about 10 feet of vine. And this is what I've got. I've got everything that's in there and everything which is in these six tubs. That's it for this cider. The remainder that's on there is gonna go into different brews and I'm gonna dry some. I've got a food dryer on the way. 
Now I'm curious to see how much hops I've got, but I want to weigh them in a pan which is currently full of apples. So I'm going to transfer the apples out of this pan into the big pan. I'll come back to you shortly. So I'm just letting that drain into there. So I want to put the hops into the smaller of the two pans and then I'm going to top the big pan up with water to loosen the apple up. Okay, I've got the smaller of the two pans clean, so I'm now going to empty the hops and see how many hops exactly I do have. Obviously very lightweight, the hops. The Cascade hops, incidentally, in case you were wondering what sort they are. Smell great though. I'll come back to you when they're all in. So I've got 516 grams in this pan, but I've still got this lot to go, so I'll have to find another pan. And I've got exactly 200 grams in that one, so that means I've got 716 grams of hops, which is a pretty good result for 10 feet of vine from the garden. It just goes to show how many more I've got left. I've probably got three kilos left on there. So with my hops, I'm going to top the pans up with spring water. I'm using spring water because the tap water where I live is chlorine and it sometimes gives weird flavours. So I've got about a litre in here and I might end up topping this up in a little while. The hops are buoyant so when you pour water on them they do float but I'm going to simmer them and then they will just mash down. So I've got three litres of water in this pan and about one litre in this pan. So the pan lids go on and I'm going to put the heat on very low and I want these to come to a gentle simmer and stew and I'm going to make some really strong hop tea which is going to go into the cider. So in the big pan if you remember I've now got my apple mush and I'm going to loosen that up by adding some more water to it because it was really dense like applesauce. And obviously I don't want it at that constituency because I need it to all mix properly. So to that end I'm going to add some spring water in there. So that's two litres and here's another two. Incidentally the plastic from the bottles all goes into the green bin for recycling. Where I live in Leeds you can recycle plastic, thankfully. Now I'm going to add a final two litres in, so there's now six litres of spring water gone in with the apple puree. So there it is, and if I give this a stir round, it's now feeling quite nice and loose actually, which is what I want. This will make a very sediment heavy cider, but it'll be packed with flavour. So for this one also, I'm going to put the heat back on and I'm going to let that again heat up and bind together. So it's now just a case of playing the waiting game. I'll come back to you with an update in a little while. Hey folks, a couple of hours have passed. Let's have a look at what's going on here. So with the hops, I've topped up both pans now with some more water as the level fell, uh, as these started to get warm and simmer. So there's more water in these pans now than what there was before, the same amount of hops. I'm going to turn the heat off of these uh, in about 30 minutes time and then I'm going to leave them to stew, possibly for 24 hours, if not for 12 hours. In here, I've got my apples and they've come through to a good temperature now. They're not quite at simmering point yet, but they're not far off. And again, as with my hops, I'm going to be leaving the apples to cool down. And this is because my fermentation vessel is plastic, so I can't be putting hot water in there. But by reheating it up again, I'm hopefully killing off any bacteria that might have settled into the apple because it has been stood for 24 hours cold. So therefore, I shouldn't hopefully get any problems with the brew from bacteria getting in there. So when all this has come to a, what I would call a decent temperature and a, and a simmer has started, I'm turning the heat off and then I'm going to let it cool naturally with the lids on before moving to the next step, which will be adding some sugar and then getting it all in the fermenter. Right, catch you later folks. Actually, I'm back sooner than anticipated because what I've decided to do is to put some of the brewing sugar into the apple mixture now so it already starts to dissolve, so I'm not waiting as long later. So this is a five kilo bag 
of dextrose monohydrate, brewing sugar, and I want to use three kilos out of there. I might not be able to get it all into the apple water. It dissolves really easily though, the brew sugar. I have actually got the full three kilos in here now though, so that's really good. And I can already tell that it's dissolved instantaneously as it's gone in there because the liquid is hot. Okay, now I've reached a point where I think I am going to take the heat off of everything. So that comes off, that comes off and that comes off. This just needs to cool down. These are going to cool down and steep and then I'm going to mash the hops with a potato masher before straining that. I'll be adding extra cold water, yeast, yeast nutrient and pectolase and I'll be fermenting in Big Bertha my Kegland flat bottom firmzilla. So hopefully by this evening I'll be ready to put all this together but if I don't do it this evening it's going to be tomorrow. Okay so I'll catch you later. Good morning from the super busy kitchen folks and apologies for the background noise that popping sound that you can hear is the air still. Anyway today is brew day one for the hoppy cider that I'm making. This is today where I'm going to get the ingredients together, do the recipe and actually make that cider. So again to clarify in terms of ingredients I'm adding the hop tea, the apple puree with brew sugar and spring water. I'm adding some extra spring water and probably more than that. I'm going to add some pectolase, yeast nutrient and my yeast of choice today is Lalvin 71B. My first time using it. So I'm going to begin today's recipe by very excitingly adding 5 litres of spring water into my fermenting vessel. By the way the big funnel is really useful. purchased from a hardware shop in Letchworth Garden City. It's really hard to buy a good big funnel you know. I'm now going to transfer my apple puree sugar water on top and it is literally a case of just pouring and pouring. All my equipment I'm using has been cleaned and sanitised incidentally to minimise the risk of bacteria being introduced and me making five gallons of vinegar but if that did happen I would simply run it through the air still and I'd have a drink it. So I'm currently on 12 litres this goes up to 30. I'm probably aiming for around about 25 or thereabouts. I will end up with about 5 litres of trub in the bottom, which is fine, absolutely fine. I might even end up with a bit more than that. I don't mind. There is always a use for this stuff, you know. cider will be extremely flavoursome whatever happens. God I'm making a mess. Right stop talking and concentrate on what you're doing Stuart. Right let's have that dramatic pour. Oh we love this bit. Here we go. Whoa come on you apples. Flipping out. Right, there's a lot of good sugary looking stuff in the bottom of this, let me show you. So you can see where some of the brew sugar has started to reform as it's cooled. So what I want to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of boiling water in and swish that around. Right, I've managed to break up that sugar, but that was properly stuck to the bottom. Right, so let's get this on. I'm just going to stir and move this around until it breaks up and dissolves. Okay that's just about dissolved enough, there's some little bits but they're fine. So I'll get this through the funnel too. Okay so next up comes my sieve which will just sit in the top of the funnel so I can pour my tea through there, separate the liquid from the hops. Hopefully not making a huge splash. 
really smell this, extraordinarily hoppy, as you would imagine. So the hops that are left are just going to go back on the garden as compost, so the garden feeds itself from what it produces. They've got quite a tobacco-y smell to them, actually. And I'm going to go to my hops and I'm going to press them with this wooden spoon. I'm not trying to force them through in any way, but what I am trying to do is to squeeze the liquid out to maximise the flavours and the oils that they're going to impart into this. And boy, they do make a difference, trust me. So I'm currently on 23 litres. So I suspect I might go to it as far as 27, 28 litres, which is absolutely fine. So that's the first lot of hops pressed now. Uh, I'm going to empty this and then come back with the other pan. Okay, the big pan's a bit big to tip like the other one, so I'm just going to use a ladle to begin with, trying not to make too much mess. Easier said than done. In fact, I might go back to the jug. Let's try the jug technique. Ugh. Yeah, that's better. I'm on 24 litres. So that sieve is now full, so now I'm going to press it with the back of the ladle to get the liquid out the flavours out of the hops again into the cider, into the cider must I should say. Anyway look, I've got the rest of this pan to empty and I've got to keep doing this, it's quite repetitive, I'll come back to you when all that is done, okay, so see you shortly. Right, that's all my liquid in, I'm just over 27 litres and that is as full as I want this because I don't want the Krausen to come and out the top, hopefully it won't. Let's see what happens. So my next ingredient is going to be some pectolase. So I've got a rounded dessert spoonful just there. I'll sprinkle that on top. And a second one. And a third one. Because I would really like this to be a clear cider if possible. And the pectolase will hopefully break down the pectic enzymes from the boiled fruit which cause cloudiness. The next ingredient is probably unnecessary, but I'm going to add it anyway, and that's yeast nutrient. I'm saying it's probably unnecessary because of all the apple and fruit fibre in there, uh, but I'm just going to put some in anyway. I'd like my yeast to be as happy as possible. I shall put one and a half splash heaped dessert spoonfuls in there. Now using a fresh clean spoon, I need to give this a really, really good stir because what I need is a consistent mixture to take the original gravity. So I need to whip up all that stuff that sank to the bottom already and it was beginning to separate. So I'm just going to do this for 30 seconds just to ensure that I've got a consistent mixture. Because it's important to know what the original gravity is so you can work out what the final alcohol by volume is at the end of the brew. Right, I'm going to drop the hydrometer in, let's see where we are for the original gravity. I'm going to have to wait for this to stop spinning, but it looks like, from where I am, that I am bang on 1.050. Yeah, I am. Ha ha ha! That's just what I wanted, so that's really nice. Experience. Okay, so here is my yeast, 71B. Now it does say to make a starter which is five times greater in volume than the amount of yeast that you're going to use. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to drip it on top and let it make its own way into the cider naturally. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, then it's my fault, isn't it? So one rounded teaspoon. Two rounded teaspoons. Three rounded teaspoons, four rounded teaspoons, and we'll finish with a flat teaspoon. That's enough, that's plenty. Okay, so there's the yeast on top, and it's already started to fall through in places. It's going to have a lovely time in there. 
it's got lots of sugar and lots of nutrient and hopefully that's going to make some flavour some cider. This smells absolutely fab so hopefully hopefully the flavour is going to be absolutely fab too. Right it's time to get the fermentation vessel put together now so this is the built-in airlock which goes on top um, it comes with this airlock already and, and quite a, a wide hole which is unfortunately not properly airtight so I've had to improvise with a bit of white tack. Seems to do the job though. If I press the sides in here you can see that the bubbler is rising so it is airtight now. And I'm going to put this on top and this locks it into place. You've just got to make sure that you don't cross thread it. So I've labelled my fermentation vessel Hoppy Cider 1.050, today's date 14th of September 22, which is brew day 1, and you can already see that separation of uh, trub and liquid taking place inside there. That trub will settle down to about there, I'm going to guess by, but it might end up splitting into two halves before dropping. That's all dependent on fermentation, flocculation and how the yeast behaves. We'll have a fermentation update once it begins, so I'll catch you then folks. So brew day one, five hours later, we've got clear separation at the top and bottom of the apple matter and we have a Krausen on top and fermentation has most definitely begun. You can see the bubble in the airlock just there. This has all gone to plan. It does look extraordinarily sediment heavy, but that will settle down. And I am expecting a lot of sediment, but I'm also expecting a lot of cider. I'll give you a fermentation update on brew day two. Catch you then. Okay, it's brew day two and we have furious fermentation taking place. That is really going like the clappers. The separated apple pulp is now all just smashed apart and it's in the entire vessel. Um, what we've got on top now is a Krausen proper. Now last night that seemed to disappear altogether, that's built up again since and the next two days will be the absolutely crazy phase so that could grow even taller, hopefully not out of the vessel. I'm expecting this fermentation to probably only last a week and maybe even less. Anyway, I'll give you an update in a few days time. Greetings from the noisy kitchen. Apologies about the background noise. I've got the dishwasher on, hobs on, tumble dryer on. It's all happening. But I've got you a brew day for update with the hot cider. Let's have a look at it. So as you can see, there is now a clear and very deep sediment line there, which is far too high. It's currently on 12 litres of sediment, which is about just over double what I would expect there to be there. Now, I suspect that this is sticking to the edge and that the true level of sediment is probably about there where my finger is. This has happened before. So what I'm going to do today is actually open it up. So lid police look away, give it a stir and then see what happens later on. In terms of fermentation, I'm getting two to three bubbles a minute through the airlock. It's in its dying phases right now. So I'm just gonna very gently get this off. And lift this out again gently. I've undone this, which has then uh, created equal air pressure in and out because what I don't want to do is to take this off and the force of me doing that squirt some water out of the airlock into the cider so undoing that just sorts that air pressure issue out so I'm just going to lift this it's a bit tight I'm just going to use a knife to get underneath it and just to prise it upwards that's it okay so you can see the bubbles, it smells fantastic. It actually smells like elderflower wine. So I've got a big clean stainless steel spoon and I'm just simply going to put that in and I'm going to give it a right good stir around because I suspect that the sedimenty stuff was stuck around the edge rather 
than it being that high in actual fact. So now I'm just going to reverse what I've done and put it back together. So that goes on first, tighten that up and then get the collar on. And it might slightly kickstart the fermentation, me agitating it like that. It probably will, which is fine. Okay, so worst case scenario is that I do end up with 12 litres of trub. Um, if I do, I do. I'll filter it and I'll run the liquid that comes out of that through my air still. It's no big deal really and I'll just make some apple brandy off it. That will still mean I've got 16 litres of cider, but I suspect the trub level when it sinks properly and settles will be somewhere in between 6 and 9 litres. Let's see what happens. Next update will be racking. There's nothing else to see in terms of fermentation now, so it's just waiting to see where it settles. So I'll probably be racking this in about two weeks time. Okay. Catch you later, folks. Good evening from the kitchen, folks. Apologies for the background noise. I've got the dishwasher on. It's been another busy kitchen day, as you can see. But today it's all about the Hoppy Cider Racking. So let's have a look at it. Now, it isn't too bad in terms of opacity. Um, I think that'll look fairly clear in a bottle. But it's going to go from here today into three demijohns and only three demijohns, not four unfortunately, because the level of trub in the bottom there hasn't gone much below 11 litres. There's more there than what I expected. No, I'm not going to worry about it. It just means I'm not going to get quite as much cider out of it as what I'd wanted. But whatever's left in there, which is at the sediment level, isn't getting wasted. It's going to be filtered and then I'm going to still that to make some brandy. So everything's going to get used and I might even use the sedimenty stuff as well because I've been baking with it. Now I don't want to siphon today because I don't want to drag any of that sediment up with it and that's always a danger when you're siphoning. So I'm going to be dipping and pouring into my three demijohns. First things first, I need to undo the lid on top so I'm just going to neutralise the pressure by undoing these and then I'm going to start to turn this. So the little nifter of it come through then. It smelled good. Right. This can be a bit tricky to get off sometimes. There we go. It smells absolutely fantastic. Wow, the hoppiness is there. That smells like it's going to have some flavour to it. Now I've got to try and dip something in there to get this out. Right, so it's going to be a case of me doing this and then pouring it through a funnel into the demijohns. It's going to take ages. I'll just demonstrate a little bit. So from here, look how clear that looks. Through there into the demijohn. I've got three demijohns in the sink and this process is going to go on and on and on. There's no point whatsoever in me boring you silly watching that. That's why she'll come back to you. See you in a bit. Okay, I'm down to 22 litres on the marker and I've got my first one filled up. Now I was using a funnel in the filter and I've just put the uh, funnel into the next image on and you can see how much trub there is in there so it's definitely been worthwhile doing that and keeping it out of here. Anyway, I need to get an airlock in this and then carry on before oxidisation could take place. Okay, so left to right, that was the first one out, that was the middle one, that was the last one out. You can see it gets milkier as you go along and this is what I've got left with. Now this is what I'm going to filter. However, I've had a slightly crazy brainwave as to something I could do with this. What I'm thinking about doing is adding it to some more apple juice after I've filtered it and see if I can ferment it. Now it will ferment but because of oxidisation it might just end up going awful but if it does I can still distill it so that's what I'm going to do. Okay so I've got my deep pan here in the bottom you might just be able to see there is some actual apple sugar water which I've made myself and I now need to pour this through there. I'll catch the sediment in here most of it and the liquid should hopefully pass through. That's the plan anyway, let's see what happens. Now 
Now this is going to take a little while to pass through and I've still got half of it left. So I'll come back to you. Okay, so there's most of the mush. Some of it I've chucked already because I've already emptied this uh, halfway once. I was going to use this for some form of cooking, but I can't because I've just remembered that it's got the hops in there and they just make things taste vile uh, in terms of food. Great in drinks, not so great in food. Anyway, that's not the bit that we're interested in. Over here. This is what I've managed to get in here. I've definitely got, I would say, almost a gallon there. Now I'm leaving it in that pan because it had some appley sugary water in the bottom so it will start to ferment again and I want to leave it for a few days in there. It might add an extra percentage or so to it and then I'm going to run it through my air still which you can see on the top shelf over there. Anyway, that isn't the focus of this film. As you know, the focus of this film is on the hot cider which is now in my office down here next to some buddies. So number one number two and number three in order that they came out and they're going to stay in here because it's quite a cool room temperature wise and of course in terms of decor. So the next film that you see from me will probably be in about a month's time when it comes to bottling. Catch you then. Good afternoon from the kitchen folks. It's my hopped cider bottling day. Big bottling day. 18 750ml bottles to do. Let's have a look at that cider. So here it is, it's now brew day 66, so it's been 44 days in there and it is fairly well clear, you can see through there certainly, there is a very little bit of haziness but you get that when you add things like hops or fruit matter into ciders anyway, so I'm not unduly concerned about that and I think in the bottle it might even clear even more. Now I've got three demijohns to empty. Each demijohn will be six bottles, so I'm just going to do the first one into the first six bottles and then I won't film the rest of it because it's just quite repetitive and really not that exciting. So it's bung out of the first demijohn and then siphoning tube goes in. So you can see that I've got the siphoning tube held in place with that very handy clip, it keeps it steady. The bottom of the tube is just fractionally above the sediment. The first bit that comes out might draw some sediment, but that doesn't matter because it's going to go into the hydrometer tube. Let's rock and roll. So there it goes and it's actually come out nice and clear to start with. Got an instant taste of that and it was very dry and quite elderflowery like hops is like that. So this is going to be um, I think a dry but very floral cider. First bottle done. And there we go, bubbles in the siphoning tube tells me that this is now done. Now that's uh, just about full, so I have actually got six bottles there. And when I drain the siphoning tube, it will absolutely uh, fill the bottles up. So now I need to bung my bottles. So I just give the bungs a little shake to get the excess water off. And then that goes in the top and push. Oof. It I should wear a glove, I do sometimes. Anyway, I'm going to repeat that five more times and then I'll come back to you. Now there's my first six bottles bunged, but the bungs won't stay in place without cages. So the cage is an essential safety feature and when the fractional fermentation takes place from me adding that sugar into there, it will create pressure and without the cage the bung basically just flies off like a missile. So you do need to do this properly and you do need to use good solid bottles as well. These bottles all weigh more than 700 ml. So they're good sturdy champagne and prosecco bottles. So there you go, you can see that just there. I've got to do this five more times. I'll come back to you when I've done that. That's my first six bottles bunged and caged. I'm just going to give them a quick rinse because they've got sticky residue on the outside and I want to label them and I don't want them being sticky. Okay, I've got the next six bottles in the sink ready to go, but before I do that, let's find out what the final gravity is for this brew. And that sank lovely. 
Okay, the final gravity for this brew is 0 0.994. This is an excellent outcome. Okay, so just working out the final alcohol by volume for this brew. I started off with an original gravity of 1.050. I deduct from that the final gravity of 0 0.994, which equals 0 0.056. And then I multiply this by 131.25, which equals, drumroll please, 7.35%. Let's just say 7.4% because with that fractional fermentation that will take place in there, it will boost it very slightly. So I'm very, very happy with that. ka -ching. Well, I think it's only fair that I have a cheeky nifter. Don't you agree? Cheers. Extremely dry, but extremely full-bodied. The hops flavour is unmistakable. The apple flavour comes through too, though, which is nice. I think this is going to be a really good cider, and I'm looking forward to drinking it properly once it's conditioned. OK, folks, I've now got to repeat that process twice more with my other two demijohns. There's no point in you watching me do all that. It's exactly the same. So I'll come back to you when I've filled the bottles, bung them, cage them and rinse them off and I'm getting ready to label them. So I'll see you in a bit. Right, I've done. Bit of a mission, but I've got there. So there we go. We've got 18 750ml bottles all filled, bunged, caged and rinsed. I'll need these to dry off before I can label them. I've got my demijohns full of hot water. I'm going to put some sanitizer in them because they're going to be reused again very soon. So I think it's time to get those labels put together. I've got a FOMOMO Bluetooth printer which is connected to my iPhone through Bluetooth and I've, I've made a quick uh, label there and then I just have to print, print label and then tell it how many I want. 18 copies, print now. There we go. And that's pretty fancy, isn't it? Right, here's the 18 lined up like proud little soldiers. So you don't need to watch me do all of these, but I'm basically just going to put the labels on now. I'll come back to you when I've done them all. Okay, folks. I've now got to leave my cider to condition for at least a month and maybe even six weeks at this time of year because the temperature isn't consistently warm enough for it to condition. So the conditioning process is whereby the sugar that's in there will create a fractional fermentation, it will give it a sparkle and it will also give the flavours chance to develop. So it's up here next to my previously conditioned raspberry and lemon cider, which is now done. Uh, interestingly, they're both the same percentage as well, so there is some consistency in the recipes that I'm doing with them. This will stay up here, like I said, for between four and six weeks. Temperature is currently 19.8. It was 20 earlier. Um, it's assisted by a light that comes on in there every evening, which warms the whole top shelf up. But at the minute, my whole living room is basically nice and warm because I've got my wood burner burning nearly all day nearly every day. So I'll come back to you in between four and six weeks time when it comes to opening and tasting. I'm looking forward. Catch you then. Good evening from the kitchen folks. It is the grand opening night for my 2022 Hoppy Cider. It's actually January 2023. It is brew day 121 and this has been conditioning for two months. Now, if you look at the bottle, you can see that the bung has definitely raised. It looks like it's raised by, oh, I would say a good two to three millimeters. So fingers crossed, I'm gonna get a sparkle. So I've had it in the fridge for the past four hours to cool it down. And I'm hoping that it's gonna look good in the glass. It's gonna pour nicely. It's gonna have a fizz. It's gonna taste nice, smell nice. Everything that I always want, you know, all those things. If I can get most of them, I'll be a happy chappy. But looking at it in the bottle, even though it's a dark green bottle, I can see that it looks pretty clear. So, fingers crossed. 
Right, so the bung cage is off, sorry. And the bung, am I gonna get a pop? Yes! <laughs> and vapour, get in there. Right, let's see how this looks then. So I'm pouring into a Bruegel glass today, a Belgian beer glass. Right, that is undeniably sparkling and I am undeniably happy about that. Good stuff, right. So it looks nice in the glass. It's got bubbles coming from the bottom there, you can see that. It smells fantastic. It smells like elderflower wine actually. I mean hops and elderflower, there must be some sort of connection between them. There must be a family resemblance, I don't know. But Definitely got a similar smell. That is absolutely fantastic. That's beautiful. Wow. If you'd given me this blind, I could have said it was a decent sort of carver Prosecco, but possibly something that was a bit more Germanic as well because it's got that sort of elderflowriness that you get with German wines. It tastes like really good wine, actually. Wow. It's got an intense flavour. It's not overly dry, it is dry. I would say it's a medium dry. The floral tones from the hops pull it away from being too dry. It's really, really tasty. I'm, I'm going to consider this one a champion. Yes, it's definitely champion, that one. Aye. Oh, it's a cracker. Anyway, so I'm going to enjoy this tonight. Unfortunately, I've got another 17 bottles of it to enjoy as well. Ha <laughs> ha! Some of them will be saved for the summer because this would make a nice summer garden drink. Anyway, folks, it's been a pleasure as always. I've got a few more to open now over the next couple of weeks, so there'll be some more brew films coming up. I'm also starting Ski to Pee today, um, and I'm starting some Aperol tomorrow. So there's going to be more recipes coming up over the next few weeks and months. So thanks for supporting my channel. Please subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. Leave comments, likes, all that other stuff. It really does help. And I'll catch you on the next film, whatever that may be. Cheers, folks. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is stewmoss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.